Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, we're going to take a look at NVLink. NVLink is this connection that you can make between two NVIDIA CUDA GPUs. This follows on SLI, which was used in older generation NVIDIA GPUs, but this is more peer-to-peer, -peer, whereas SLI, you had this sort of super GPU with subordinate GPUs underneath it. We're going to look really at the a couple of levels that you might deal with NVLink at, all the way from just two GPUs, like you might have on a system that you build yourself or buy yourself, up to what this looks like at the supercomputing level. We're also going to look at a code example where I go in and directly make use of NVLink to do a peer-to-peer -peer copy between two GPUs, and we'll see what that performance looks like compared to with and without peer and also just host to GPU. To make use of NVLink, you need two GPUs that support it. If you're dealing with the GeForce line, that is two 3090s at this point. I do not believe it's available on any of the other GeForce models. If you're dealing with the professional workstation line, the A6000, A5000, so on and so forth, my understanding is it's available on the 6000 and the 5000, but definitely make sure that it's available. If you look at the history of GPUs over the last five years or so, this is very much being pushed to the high end of GPU. If you want to make use of multiple GPUs for gaming, mostly this seems to be being pushed more towards just have one high end, like a 3090 or something for the game. This is really more for the render forms and for scientific computing. Now I'm not a gamer myself much, so, Definitely look to Linus Tech Tips or Jay's Two Cents if you want to know about using multiple GPUs with a gaming system. The system that I'm making use of here is a marvelous system that Exact Corporation is allowing me to make use of. This is with dual 3090s and an NVLink bridge on it. So we'll, we'll see what this is really doing. NVLink is a way for your GPU with all of its CUDA cores to be able to communicate with other GPUs without going through your PCI Express bus. You can see if you're going through PCIe, communicating with your CPU, the four core CPU you see there, it's slower. NVLink opens up this massive super highway between your two GPUs, allowing peer-to-peer -peer high speed connectivity between the two GPUs for direct memory access between them. They use one address space. And if you have the right CPU and you have a high-end system, I believe Exact has a couple of systems like that, it even communicates to the CPU in a very high-speed NVLink enabled pathway. If you're in the world of supercomputing where you potentially have eight GPUs on your system, it looks a little bit more like this. And this is where NVLink really outperforms SLI because you've got eight GPUs on this theoretical system being shown by AWS if you were using one of their eight GPU cloud instances. Here you would have the GPUs divided amongst two CPUs and you can see that each of these NVIDIA CUDA compatible GPUs has a NVLink up to four NVLinks with other GPUs. So it's not completely even in terms of every GPU can access every other GPU's memory space. You can see that the GPUs that are connected on the same CPU have ac full access to the other three. Whereas they only have access to sort of their peer GPU on the other cluster. So this does create some interesting challenges when you're actually writing the low-level CUDA code that is dealing with this. And not all of the PyTorch and TensorFlow Kira's libraries that you're making use of will support this out of the box. This is used a lot in scientific computing and in render farms, where you will want these GPUs to be able to directly access the space. If you're doing high-performance 
training, you're going to typically have a whole bunch of these use multiple hosts. If you're using 20, 30, 40, whatever number of GPUs, you're probably going to have them using something like Horovod, which allows very parallel training and you're parallelizing your batches across. So you don't so much need to be copying memory from GPU to GPU. If you're using the cloud, it's not a question of do you want to have NVLink or not. It's typically there for you, at least with AWS. I'm not as familiar with the other cloud offerings. If you're writing your own custom CUDA software doing mathematical computation on an extremely high-end system like this, you're going to write the code so that it is taking advantage of your particular architecture. If you're using off-the-shelf software, you may not be able to use all of this advanced of hardware. You may end up with each of the GPUs operating largely independent of each other. It's still going to be fast, but you won't gain the advantage of keeping things on the NVLink superhighway, so to speak. So now let's get into a code example. Let me show you a couple of slides from NVIDIA just to show what we're doing. And I'm going to go beneath PyTorch and TensorFlow both. I'm going to go right to CUDA. We're going to use PyCUDA and use an example that I provide the link to in the description. It's not my example. I just did some updates to take it past the Tesla architecture that it was written for and the old school print statements in, in Python 2 that are parentheses less. What you can do when you have multiple GPUs within VLink, make use of UVAs. This is single address space. So your CPU, GPU memory are all set up on the same address space rather than having to deal with separate instances of each of them like you see here. We'll get into why that is important now. Let me show you what the code actually looks like. So here I am using Jupyter Notebook on the dual GPU system that Exact was kind enough to provide me. This is with dual 3090 on NVLink. I don't do a whole lot of Pi CUDA. I've done straight up C++ or actually C99 CUDA in the past. If you'd like to see further examples, it would be fun to jump into this again of going directly to CUDA in Python. If you're, if you're doing the right thing, it, this, this is as fast as it gets in terms of linear algebra type of things. But let's just look at an example here. You'll see lots of pushes and pops that's basically dealing with the fact that we have multiple GPUs and flipping us back and forth between the correct context so that we're the current context is the GPU that we're currently talking about. Let me just go ahead and run this. It goes really quite quickly. When I run it, you can see a copy from the host CPU to the GPU. This is all sub-second, and this is a pretty big block of data that I'm dealing th with. This is 5 million floating point numbers being copied, being thrown around here. This is a copy from the CPU to the GPU. Obviously, that is the slowest of all of them. This is mapping it into the universal address space. We'll see that in the code in a second. That is uh, a 29, basically, uh, and then 17 here. So you can see it's, and I'm talking in orders of magnitude there, but it's taking it down considerably. We're dealing in the thousands of a second here. So you can see what I'm doing here is the two CTXs are the two GPUs that I'm dealing with. And I am basically enabling pure access for this last one. And that's why it goes really so fast. And you can also see when I'm doing the actual copies, when I'm doing the function timers here, notice the first one when I'm dealing not with that universal address space. I have to specify CTX1 and CTX2. That tells it which GPU that I'm dealing with. Whereas when I'm using the UVA, the, the universal 
address space between the two, I don't have to specify those contexts anymore. It knows purely by the address number which device I happen to be on, CPU, GPU 0, or GPU 1. Thank you again to Exact for providing a dual GPU NB-Link system for me to try this out on, and thanks for watching this video. And please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my next videos on deep learning, artificial intelligence, and GPUs. Thank you very much.